So Heroku is, was originally made for like uh, Ruby on Rails, that kind of stuff, and it's been around for a little while now. And lately they started out in Java, and you can run then Scala and uh, other Java frame, frameworks like Play. I don't know if you guys have heard of Play. It's an interesting one. Groovy on, uh, you can run Groovy on it. And so naturally you can run Cold Fusion on it. And this isn't any of the work I've done. Well, I helped out with a couple of these projects, but I found some projects on GitHub, forked them, started working with them. And so I'm gonna show two approaches to this. Uh, one is using the Heroku, I'd say Heroku way, where everything is self-contained within Git. You use Git as almost your source, well, it is your source management, but you use Git to push and pull items, and it'll like load up the website for you, start it up with a Maven script, and you don't have to really do anything. All I did pretty much was grab the stuff from GitHub, and I'll have the links, drop it in there, start it up, and you're off and going. It's, it's really cool. And the other way, the, the Ruby way, is using Maven, and the dependencies are all managed. And the Open Blue Dragon way is using a build package, they call it. And it's not as Heroku way, where the dependencies aren't all built into the Open Blue Dragon package. But it's really easy to get going. You create, a open, you create a, a directory, um, do two commands, I think it is, and you have, you, have, you have your connection up to Heroku. You can push to it. The only thing is he doesn't have a way to start it up and test it locally, really. But you can get around that. He emailed me and told me some ways. The Raylo way is um, you can start up your own, your own server and test locally on there, which is pretty nice. I don't know what, I don't know what Heroku is. Uh, Heroku, that's a great question. Heroku is, I, I almost would call it a facade to Amazon EC2, where it hides all the infrastructure maintenance, setting up the servers, uh, administration of the servers, setting up load balancers, that kind of th thing. Because this, in the database server maybe, it's what you could call probably in between, they call them dynos, which is processes, and in between uh, Amazon Micro and uh, what is the next step up? I can't remember with Amazon. It's like the bottom two ones. So it's a micro to small, I think it is. So you get, you get a one dyno free. So you get 100 or 750 hours free. And I haven't, ha I've had, I have like three Heroku instances up and I've, I don't even, it doesn't cost me anything. So it's free up to a certain part. But so Heroku is more of a PAAS instead of like a, Amazon is a IaaS, which is an infrastructure as a service, and Heroku is more. What's the P stand for in PaaS? Platform. Is more of a platform. So that's how they're kind of different. So this one gives you everything. You pay a little bit more, but you don't have to do any administration or anything like that. But it's on top of Amazon. Yeah, yeah, it's on top of Amazon. So what we're going to be covering is. The first one is the quick guide, which is just four steps to get going. And then I'm gonna show how to set up Heroku locally. And then we're gonna show how to do Rilo, which is one approach, which is the Heroku approach. And then we have the Open Blue Dragon, which is more of a hack on, like a, they call them, I think they call them builds. So it's a little different build package. And then we're gonna show some Heroku commands for troubleshooting maintenance and then some resources. And this is just really cool and really easy to get a server up and going in like five minutes. It was pretty neat, pretty exciting. Because Cold Fusion, it seems like it takes a while. You have to install your Cold Fusion, you have to set up your servers, you have to do this and do that. Uh, even trying to get an Amazon Cloud instance going, you have to, I don't know, it was kind of weird. I tried doing that this weekend and I, could, I don't even think I was able to connect yet quite. I mean, I got the instance up and going and stuff like this, uh, but I didn't get very far. So what, what we won't cover is general cloud information. If you guys want, we can kind of talk about why you'd want to go into clouds, but it'd be an open discussion because everybody probably could contribute more to, to why you'd want to move to a cloud. And these are uh, three recent articles. Um, I think they're only like three months old is the oldest one. And so the links will be on my uh, website and they're bit.ly ones so you can just jot down the, the back end of it. 
So do you guys do you guys know what a cloud is? It's, it's pretty yeah, okay. So what and why? So Heroku, like we were saying, is a PaaS platform as a service, and it supports originally it was Ruby, so it was Rails, and then <coughs> they added Java. And you can do Python, Node.js, Clojure, uh, Scala, Groovy. So it's really cool that you can do all these different all these different languages with just three commands. Pretty much all it is is a git add, git commit, and git push, and your stuff's out there. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty awesome. And so the big difference is we can probably talk talk about this is why would you use this instead of Amazon? Because like we said, it's sitting. It's providing a service on top of a platform on top of Amazon, which Amazon's infrastructure, and this is providing benefit and ease of use. So, so price, it is, it is a little bit more expensive. Um, I think the small instance, or the micro Amazon is like uh, three cents. Uh, I don't even know what they do. Three cents an hour? Is that how they rank them? I'm, I'm not. E yeah. Amazon. I thought it was like a eleven cents, or maybe that's for a different. That's size. probably a different size. Yeah. And so. Yes, per hour. Yeah. So it's three cents. I think three, four cents for the the micro one on Amazon. Heroku, they kind of think it averages out to about five seconds, and this is what you actually get with Heroku. So it's somewhere between a a micro and a small Amazon instance. And so the price, you're kind of comparing two different things because you have your infrastructure and you have this platform as a service. So you just have to kind of understand that when you figure in price. And like I said, the first dyno is free, so you get 750 dynos, the processes, um, on each application. So you could have 20 applications and it won't cost you anything as long as you keep under that 750 uh, dynos a month. Uh, where they get you probably is more like where you, like if you wanted to attach some services to it, like a beef up your database, because they give you a little starter database. Um, that'll cost you. And then um, we're talking about just one process running. And what you do is this is so easy to scale. You just have a slider and you just scale up and down. Or when you, when you push the object or you push your application, you can say, give me two dynos for my web server and give me like three dynos for the back end. And so that's when they start to get you because those are running every hour or all the time. And then you're talking five dynos an hour. So your price is gonna go up because we're just gonna be playing around with one. So um, the one, it'll shut down after I think half an hour of non-use. So it'll kill itself after it's not being used with one. And then uh, it'll take a little bit, but not very hard to get started up. So here's an example of what we're talking about. So this is uh, Open Blue Dragon on, on Heroku. And then uh, here was uh, Rilo on, Open, on Heroku. So this is what we're gonna end up with at the end of this presentation. So this is Heroku's site, and we can log in here. And then you can see I have some instances, and they're all one, and it's not costing me anything. I think a couple of them are Ruby, and then we have the Open Blue Dragon one, and then this one's the Rilo one. So back to why you'd want this. So um, this is just a price breakdown. So here's the micro, and here's the small of Amazon, and the price prices. So they're saying, I didn't know this, but you can pay ahead on Amazon prices. So it's a lot cheaper if you pay like for the whole year. So they go by the whole year price with the deposit. And then they break down the RAM and stuff for Amazon. But the drawbacks of going the cheaper route is you have to maintain those servers for yourself. You have to make sure that the security is up to date, the patches are applied. You have to install everything. Heroku, it's magic, it just does it for you. 
with uh, with the build with the dependencies. So, and then they have some real life examples. So these are a couple good links if you want to know why you'd want to go with Heroku instead of uh, instead of just Amazon. Scaling is the big one they mentioned because scaling you'd almost have to get like a load at, uh, load uh, web server or load balancer, set that up on Amazon, be able to kind of automatically turn them on and off the bottom ones. So this one, it's just, you just do this, like I said. So here's how you would scale it. So you'd say web instances, two dynos, and then worker, 10. And then that scale it up right away for you. So. So that's kind of a comparison of between Amazon and Heroku. And then why would you use Heroku is like I was mentioning, you don't have to think about the servers at all. They, they maintain it. They have somebody on call for the database, for the servers 24 seven. And then all it is is you just use your command line. Like I said, it's three commands, git add for your changes, git commit, git push. And it goes to the, to the site, to Heroku site. And your dependencies are managed the first example, our dependencies are managed with Maven, which is a build process dependency process manager. So pretty much when you push it, it rebuilds everything from scratch again. Our second example, Open Blue Dragon, is using a build package, or yeah, I think it's a build package, and it's a little different, but it's, it's pretty slick how it works. So 170 di or, 100 or 750 dynos per hour free, and then you get a starter database, which is Postgres. But you can use add-ons, and you can do some other databases. So, any questions? So, pretty much, the first two steps you do only once. So you sign up, you install the tool belt, you log in, and then, well, the first three steps, because I really don't even log in anymore, and then uh, you deploy your app. That's, that's it. And so we're going to be stepping through those. So to set up Heroku, you need to sign up. So you need Maven installed on your computer too. So here's a link to get Maven. You need a little basic Git um, knowledge, add, commit, and push. Those are, those are the only three commands you really need to know. And then here's the sign up link. Since I'm signed in, yeah, it took me here. But uh, I think it just asks you for your email address when you sign up. So the tool belt, whoops. This installs three different things for you. You don't even have to install Git if you don't have it. The tool belt will automatically install Git for you. And then it, uh, it installs the Heroku commands, and then Foreman, which I'm not even sure what Foreman is. It's, it's, it's a, an easy option for running your apps locally. But I don't think that applies to us. I think that applies more to the Ruby. I think Foreman is a Ruby app web server. So um, <coughs> to install it, you could, uh, this is how you do it for, for uh, Ubuntu. They have executable here. Oh, so I mean that's it. So you just drop that in, run it, and then the first time you log in, it'll ask you for your credentials and your password, and then it'll create the public key for you. After that, you don't really have to log in anymore because uh, you can see from here. So it's just the command line. So that ran Her Heroku help. And then you can see your commands here. And so Heroku app. Oops, app, I think. You got an extra K at the end of the world. Oh, thanks. Maybe it's just apps. Huh. Oh, totally spelling it off. 
Okay. Heroku apps. So this is my apps that I have on Heroku. So that's the command to see your apps. And so first you'd install the Tua Belt, go in the appropriate route for your OS. And then you log in, which is shown here. And next, what you do is, so we're going to set up, actually set up Rilo here. You'd, uh, you'd create it, you'd go to java.heroku.com. And I'm sure you can do this part through the command line. And you're going to create the containerless one. So sending the request. Kind of slow. So you create the containerless web application with embedded Jetty. It's going to load. So this is the Java, uh, front-facing Java for uh, information. There's a lot of good information in the video here. And then uh, just, uh, it talks about scaling and some other things. So you'd create this one. And so now this will create a new instance for us. Let that run. Okay, so that's, that's done. And then it gives a name. You can rename these to what you want. Like I renamed the one to Open Blue Dragon, but it gives you a name. So now it's going to fire up and open this. So this is what it did. It gave you a web instance, a jetty ready to go. And so now what we'll do is it walks you through. We're just going to do the command prompt. There is Eclipse information here, but we're just going to stick with the command prompt. So it gives you the information how to do this. We've already installed the tool belt. We have Maven installed. We've logged in. And so now we're going to check this out. Can you guys see that? Yeah. And then Heroku tool belt installed Git. So you won't have to install that if you don't have that installed. So now we're going to check out Heroku, this app that they created. And then we don't have, this is a, the next steps don't apply to us since we're going to be doing cold fusion. And do you guys know what that command is? That uh, clone, git clone? It pretty much, git is uh, decentralized or distributed. So there's three commands that talk to the remote Git servers, uh, clone, which pulls down the clone or the uh, the information, the the repository, and so we pull down the repository locally. And then the O command, I've never really seen that before. It must be saying create. Yeah, I'm not sure what that O is. So so we pull down the repository. You know, I pulled it down in the wrong spot. We'll pull it down here. And you can see it's pretty fast. How it clones it. And uh, pulls it down. Let that go. Okay, so now if we CD, we'll have this folder in here. So we have the fast refuge one that we created. So, so let's. Uh, so what you have to do now is you have to clone this uh, this Heroku, this one here. Come on. Okay, we'll just go to Start the, the back and go the other way. You think so? <laughs> no. 
Yeah, we'll just go to the GitHub then. So this will have all the application for uh, Rilo and everything on it. So we'll copy that. And then git clone. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually do this in the web application folder. So let's look at the directory structure here for you guys. See what that clone actually did. My computer's dragging. So if we go into fast. So what it is, that POM file is actually Maven's, and that has all the dependencies, has everything in it. This will be better to look at it through this way. So that's the Maven file that has all the dependencies and that does all the the getting Rilo, setting it up, setting up all the uh, Jetty, getting that going. So what what we want to do is we want to go in main because our web application will be here. And this is that page we saw when we when we looked when it when it opened up the page after we created it. So we'll go here, CD into source. And CD into main, and then web apps. Oops. So this is where our web, our bottom directory is for our website. So now let's clone that. You know that's going to throw it. Uh, I can move it around. What cloning does is it'll it'll take that that directory, the repository name, create a folder for it, and put it put all those files into that folder. So what it actually did was here, it created this one, but we don't actually need need it there. So I'm just going to copy this stuff over. But, and I took the I should have took the git directory too. Let's make sure I grab that. So these are hidden. We'll make sure to copy those over. And then delete this. And I'm not sure what the git command is just to output it right into the folder, but I'm sure there is one. So we took the the Rilo 4 on uh, git project and we moved it into our web directory. So that's here. So we cloned it and copied it in. And then now you just make sure it runs. So this is the this is Maven. We're gonna run Maven. What is Maven again? It's a dependency manager. You can think of it as ant, where it's a build tool. <coughs> so So it's a Maven clean package. And this will just tell us that everything still is good. Oh, oops. No, whoops. No. Bowels. And so now let's get in all the dependencies. So it's running a clean it couldn't find these artifacts, so it's going to pull them down. And then it, if we had tests, it would run the tests. And so the key is that this was successful. So then the next thing is, if we wanted to actually look at this on our web server, you would run this command. I don't know if you guys can see that down here. So we're going to run this now to start up Jetty. Might be easier just to copy it. And these are all in this Git project. Oh, 
Okay. So now it started it up. So now we can see it. Hmm. Oh, we started from scratch. So that's okay. So let's do a. Roku create. Hmm. Not sure what I did wrong. But we can take a look at my other one I have going on. So this is the same setup. It's just the exact same thing. It's just not building it from scratch like we were doing before. So we'll run that here. Oh, I think I know why. I didn't shut, I had Tomcat start up right away. When my computer boots up. So I think it was conflicting with the uh, Tomcat. So it started up here. And so now if we go to port 80, we should see my demo page. So it's, uh, all this is just, uh, out of the box it comes with, uh, with wheels, but you could install your own thing in here if you wanted to. So those files are all right here. And this is all running locally. So, if we change something, let's, um, so this is, I guess it worked because we're in the fast one now and I ran the fast. So we're in the fast refuge. And so the, so we're still going with the creating it from scratch one. So let's change something in the fast folder so we're fast web apps and then it's a source main web app so this is what it installed so let's change the index and this is kind of like ruby on rails where it's a configuration over convention so we want to go into the views and then wheels I think it's this one. We'll change their their file so we can see what see what it looks like. So let's just go here. So we'll start up the local instance again. Should see hopefully somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, started the whole instance. We can try it in this one. These are the layout files. These are like the wrapper ones. Okay. 
So that's so that's it. So you'd make your changes, and then so this is how you actually deploy these changes. Because if you remember, we have this other instance out on Heroku, and you can open it just going Heroku open, and this will open it up. Oops, helps if you spell it right. Oh, we're in a different one, I guess. Because I did that Heroku crate, and I shouldn't have. <coughs> when you do a Heroku crate, it throws a Heroku file, I thought. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. I kind of messed stuff up when I when I created the, the application. So let's use the other one. Let's make a change over here. So source main, and it's in the web folder, and views. So this is the main. Hmm. My Eclipse is crapped out on me. <laughs> Isn't that weird? You should be able to right click on it, maybe open it in a text editor instead of a CFML editor. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, I must have screwed something up, really. Kind of weird. So that open command should have got us to the Heroku instance, but it went to this one for some reason. So let's just go to Heroku, grab my instance name. It was the fast one. So this is what we left off before when we created it originally. So. Let's do a git uh, commit or git add. So git status shows us all the files that we're going to upload to it. So I added the files and then we commit them. And then the M is for a message. And then git push Heroku, and this is where it deploys it. It should deploy it if everything's working right. It might take a little while, but it shouldn't take too long. And you'll be able to see what Maven does. So this is git commands right now. It's compressing everything, going to push it. And so it detected it's a Java instance, and then it's going through the Maven file. And this is where all the dependencies happen. And it should start up here. Slug is like all the programs together combined. And there's actually a limit on the how big your slug could be. Okay. So now it's deployed it. So let's... Uh, Check it out here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but it should it should be very easy, and I'm making it look very hard. Because <laughs> it was amazing when I was doing it this weekend. Um, I'm not quite sure how I messed it up, but uh, we can try the Open Blue Dragon one. 
So the Opal and Blue Dragon one's using a build pack, which is a little different than the process before where all the dependencies were in the Maven file. This one, all you need to do is download the Open Blue Dragon file, then wherever you, wherever you create a folder to put all your Cold Fusion files in, you take the, you extract, um, let's see, I can open that zip up. You extract some files into it. So you extract the web apps dot uh, open BD files into your folder. And I can show you guys that here. So, so here's the here's the extracted Open Blue Dragon file, and so I let's see. So I extracted the Open Blue Dragon, or the so I took the Open Blue Dragon files, put it here. I haven't did anything with Heroku yet, so this is where we would do the Heroku stuff. So let's uh, CD into here. It's not a Git project. Okay, so these are the files. So we add Get commit. So this is where we're going to connect it to Heroku. So the other process is we created it off their website. We created the instance off their website. This one we're going to create it when we actually, with this command here, with this create command. So you see we have one, two, three, four, five, six right now. So with this git command or with this Heroku command, we're going to create a new application. Let me copy that. Off our GitHub. So I don't have to type it. See the Heroku one, or the Open Blue Dragon one. Hmm. Oh, here it is. So we'll just run this command so I don't have to type it. And this will actually create the instance for us. And then you give it a name. So Ryan Stilly, whoops. Looks like we're missing. A space. Yeah. Oh, so I added git command to it. It's a Heroku command. I don't know why I did a... So it's just that, Heroku command. And so now this should actually create it for us. Yeah, see it. Oh, oops. So that's the command you were in. I don't know if you guys, when it was down there, you guys can see it. So I created, I pasted that in there, changed the app name to Ryan Stilly. And so now I've created ryanstilly.heroku.com. I'll take it in if you created it with a domain name that already exists, so probably an error. I would think so. I was surprised, yeah, I was able to create it with uh, Open Blue Dragon. So. I think the build package is probably still going, maybe. 
So looks like it's doing something. So when it loads, we should have open blue dragon. Oh, you know, I probably didn't do the push. So, yeah, I don't think I pushed the files up there. We just created the instance. That first command just created the instance. And this one will actually push up our open blue dragon files. And hopefully this one will actually. Um, the Open Blue Dragon one, he gives you hints on how to make that push smaller, so you can you can make a git commit or git ignore file, so you don't have to push up all the stuff that's not needed. But we're pushing it all up here, so it's 20% done. So we'll come back and check this out when it's done. Continue on with the presentation. So that's how you would deploy it on Open Blue Dragon. So it's three three steps. I kind of bobbled through them, but uh, it's really it's really a lot easier than I'm making it. The the Raylo one is six steps to get your app going. So um, some Heroku commands. So we can run through some Heroku commands. So this is still going. It's launching it now. So it's done. So now let's check it out. So this is ryanstilly.heroku.com. And we should see the Open Blue Dragon welcome page. Once it loads, I'll watch it in the background. Oh, there. OK. So so we have one dyno, one process behind it. And so that's 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 the how you'd get Open Blue Dragon up and go in there. And so now any change we do, I, I would just do a git commit the change, push it, and then it'd be deployed out on Heroku. So that's as, that's as easy as it is to make changes. So some Heroku commands for troubleshooting. We did the Heroku help. Uh, Heroku PS will show us the processes. So we have one web process going, one dyno going. So if we wanted to, we could scale it up. So let's scale it up. And this is as easy as it is to scale. Whoops. Heroku. Did I type that right? something about verifying your account. Um, yeah, maybe since I'm adding all these accounts, it's like wondering what I'm doing. So that, that should have scaled it. And then if we would have went back to the processes, we would see not one going, but we'd see two processes going. But that should be as easy as it is to scale. You just r run that command. Heroku logs will show us. So since we're, we don't have like access to the actual physical server, we can see the logs here. And so this is how you would troubleshoot. If you have errors, you'd troubleshoot it this way. And it's a continuous feed. So I don't think, I think eventually those top ones will drop off and it's only a snapshot. So this is how you troubleshoot with Heroku uh, logs. And then you can run one-off commands too with Heroku. So this would open up the council on actual on Heroku's site. Hmm. Maybe I don't maybe I don't have those commands right. Looks like it's running whatever you type on it. Yeah, so it actually run that on the the server. But maybe since it's not a Rails app, there's not a console. 
That might be. Because well, so what, what, so what if you just say run? What does it do? Um, we can try that. So it's just running one off processes. So that's how you could troubleshoot too by running stuff that way. But the run, the logs is the big one to, to look at what's going on with the server. So other commands is you can see Heroku apps. And then now we should have Brian's app too. Runs. And then Heroku info. Hmm. And then to cancel stuff, you just do Control C. Not sure why that one wasn't running. We can try info. Hmm. Maybe it's my computer. Oh, there it is. So this is this, the one specifically for this app. So you can see we have no we have the Postgres add-on, you have the Git information, you have the the URL here. So apps, let's see if that one runs finally. Yeah, so that one ran. So here's the instance we just created with uh, Open Blue Dragon. And then now if we wanted to destroy this, so Heroku restart would restart the app. And like we said, it's one dyno, so it's like one process. So it restarted that one process. And then to destroy, or to get rid of it, so we have it running here. This is the Ryan's app. And so the first time the dyno runs, it's a little slow. So let's destroy that. And it'll ask you if you want to make sure if you want to destroy it. You can do a force command so it automatically destroys it. So this is just a safe check. So here, that loaded again. And now it should be faster before we destroy it. Because that first time it had to start up everything since it's one dyno. And so here's how to destroy it. So now it's gone. So it's that easy to fire up apps and destroy them, to play around with it. And it's awesome because you can do Cofusion with it, you could do uh, Groovy, you could do some other languages, Node, play around with it, create them and destroy them really fast. So like we're using Cofusion, how do you set up a data source? Um, you'd have to, you know, I haven't got that far yet, but I suppose through the administrator, and then in the book, is uh, some information too. It, it's all through the command line, but I suppose you could, once you got to your instance up, you could use connect to it through a GUI. But there's actually. Um, I wondered if you'd be able to hit the. Because yeah. you're sharing that administrator, right? What, no. No, it's. It is, it is just your own. Okay. Yeah, it's your own. But so I, I don't think you'd be able to create a data source. I think you'd have to use the Cofusion S3 tools to connect it there. Oh, that's a good point. So the Heroku instance is on Amazon, or not the Heroku instance, but the database instance is on Amazon. And does Amazon have like a block? I don't know, some like block service. So it's it's spanned across a bunch of blocks in case something goes down. The database is spanned across ones. But yeah, that's one thing I haven't got around to yet is connecting a database to it. So. Um, the Heroku documentation is really good. So this is getting started for, for Java. And the one I'd recommend if you use uh, Eclipse is I'd, I'd recommend running through the Eclipse one. Because with the Eclipse one, you can actually control everything through here. So let's refresh that, see what we have going on. So you can actually you can actually control your your uh, Heroku instances through this app or through Git or through uh, Eclipse. So you could scale it here. 
you can destroy it, you can uh, get some information on it. So I wonder if that's how you would connect to it. Oh, the URL. Probably somehow through that. But yeah, I haven't played around with the database stuff yet. Yeah, so maybe you could do a data source that is regular CFLRE stuff. Yeah. I think so. I figured that would work. I just wasn't sure how you create the data source. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is pretty nice. You can, you can do everything through Eclipse. And the walkthrough wasn't that wasn't that bad to get it set up. And you can import stuff through Eclipse too, so that Ryan instance, if we still had it, we could actually you can actually import it in through Eclipse. So tool import existing applications, Heroku applications. So if we if we had Brian, we could import it right here and work with it. So code school has a great, this is the first uh, video I watched about Heroku uh, um, quite a while ago. Uh, it's eight minutes long and it talks about it, but it's from the Ruby perspective, but all the commands are the same. I mean, git commit, git, or git add, git commit, git push. I mean, that's pretty much it. So, and then you can deploy wars directly, which I didn't have much success last night. So if we wanted to deploy a war here, you can say deploy, and you could grab the war and deploy it. But I was having problems when I would load the application. So I don't think these wars, the Cold Fusion wars are quite set up to be deployed on Heroku. So you have to go through one of those routes that I showed. But it'd be cool if you could just deploy the war, figure out why it's not working. So um, I didn't add the link for the open Blue Dragon one because I just found about that one last night. So that's pretty much my presentation. So do you guys have questions? No. You guys think you'd use something like this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, once you get the database, figure that out. I think this really, if you're going to move to the cloud, maybe EC2, this would simplify it a lot. Yeah, because you didn't have to create the EC2 instances and stuff. You just, like we did that create command. And yeah, it's it, a lot, and it sounds like it's a lot easier to scale than if you had to do it in EC2. If you do it on raw EC2, you have to write all that stuff yourself. Yeah. Yeah, somehow you'd have to set that all up within Amazon's infrastructure. You'd have to have an instance that's a load balancer and all that stuff. Yeah, the, the thing that I think is pretty cool about it is just being able to fire up an app, throw it out there. It's free. So, like, I, th I was doing some JavaScript stuff for a guy uh, last week, and so he wanted data tables. So I threw up the data tables up on Amazon or up on the cloud so he could see it. And I think it's right here. Oh, maybe not. One of these, I think, is the data uh, CF data tables example. So I was just able to throw up an example real fast for a guy, not costing anything. So yeah, um, I definitely check it out. It's pretty cool, and it's really a, a lot easier than I was stumbling through. So. Um, any other? Did you, did you use Rhino? Did you uh, deploy Rhino just as a choice, or did you try with uh, the? I the, I haven't tried with Adobe because I never I didn't have much success with the wars, and then Adobe's war is like <laughs> like twice as or three times as large as uh, Rhino, so I never deployed the Adobe war. But we could we could try it and see how it works because I think I have a a Rhino war. But we'd probably get the same, the error message. So see the Adobe War is 240 megabytes and the other ones are like 50 and 60. So this will take a little while to load, but we can let it load in the background and see what we get. So this is how you would deploy a war. So you're deploying it without creating a new? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just tacking it onto this old instance. And 
we could we could create a fresh one. And when you saw we had this Java thing, or the Java where we created the containerless one, they have a Tomcat one too, which I'm not quite sure. Maybe we it'd be better to try to deploy it on the Tomcat one. Here's play, and here's uh, we're not sure what. Depends on which version. Yeah. So, and you can switch out the Jetty instance too. I read, but I didn't have much luck with Maven last night playing around with it. So we'll let this upload, and then um, I guess that's pretty much it. Unless you guys want to see some other things. Do you have any plans for anything long term to use this with? No, but I saw some guys, this was an example I saw was a, like a guy got married and he threw his application out there for free. I mean, he's only going to have family, you know, looking at his wedding album and his wedding website, stuff like that. So that would be a long-term cheap, you don't have to pay for it. One, you know, you get all this processing for free. And so if you have like small one-off apps you want to throw out there, that's probably what you would. And you know, I was thinking about I have this uh, custom tag for uh, data tables where you just start passing stuff in and it throws out. I don't know if you guys have seen data tables before, but it takes a, um, a table and makes it dynamic. And so I have a ColdFusion custom tag that, that'll, that passes in a lot of this stuff to make it dynamic and sorting and stuff. And even it's all eight. ColdFusion driven there? No, this isn't, but I, but I have an example, and maybe long term I'll put the example out on Heroku and link to it from my GitHub account, because, let's see, I think I call it CF data tables. Yeah, yeah, you could try to throw Mango up there, I wonder if uh, Mango would work. And then there's ways, instead of going to ryanstilly.heroku.com, where you could set up your DNS to route to ryanstilly.net, you know, stuff like that. So that, that'd be cool to get, to get stuff like that up and going. I don't see my data tables example. But it's a custom tag that I have out on GitHub that you can just pass in stuff really easy. And in long term, maybe I'd throw that out there on Heroku for just something to play with. So if you pay for it, you'd be able to use your own domain then? Uh, you know, I'm not sure if that's an add-on. I read about how they can do it, but... Um, so here's the add-ons. So they have a lot of... Uh, different things. Uh, some are free, some you pay. So we were talking about the dinos are independent, isolated, so you can't do like session management with them. So this is like one you'd use for session management. And all you do is say Heroku add add-ons and this would give you the add-on. And so maybe it's not free anymore. There's a free option at the bottom. Oh. Oh, they did put it. I was like, holy cow, that was the cheapest one. <laughs> so, yeah, the cheaper one's just a free developer one. So, yeah, you can see when you start doing add ons and stuff, if you have a big site, the, you'd probably want, maybe want to move over to Amazon eventually. But this is just great for just quick setups and getting stuff going. So, did you want to raffle off the. The book. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Yes.